Hey everybody, welcome. It is Sunday and uh, it's time once again for our Bible devotions. And um, and uh, we are in Romans right now and we're in chapter 13. And this one is a very interesting one and we might even have some disagreements on it. I don't know. Uh, we'll see if there's any talk on the comments below. But uh, if, if you are ready, get your Bible out and turn to Romans 13. I'm using the English Standard Version here, using this nice Bible that my sister got me. And uh, so let's get started. Oh, if you don't have a Bible, go to BibleGateway.com and turn to Romans 13 there. And, um, and let's get at it, all right? And Paul is still instructing, instructing people here on how to, to live as a true Christian and, and what it takes to do that. Verse 1, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Uh, in other words, they're there um, because um, for civil authority to help keep the peace. Otherwise, um, in the footnotes, it says there would be anarchy, no rules at all. Um, would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. Verse 4, if you're wondering where we're at. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. conscience. Uh, for because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Verse 7, Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. So, as believers, we need to respect our government. We need to obey them. Uh, there are times that in, in that God has raised up leaders like Moses, for example, <clears throat> to uh, to go against the leading authorities. Um, this is something that, you know, that God has allowed. Um, and for us to to do that willy-nilly, it, it, it's more likely that God's going to want us to obey him, uh, obey our, the authorities that it, they put in. Remember, uh, they are subject to God, and, and they are subject to God and have to give an account for how they ruled over people, um, whether they're saved or not saved. So, um, um, so us as Christians, we are being exhorted here, uh, being taught, we've been strongly advised and told that we need to submit to the authorities. That means to obey them. And if we owe taxes to that, we, we pay that. And, uh, and really, in verse 7, we're showing respect to anybody that deserves it, right? And, and more than that, if they're in a place, you know, you may not like the guy or gal that's there, but because of the position they're in, we need to respect we need to honor them. And in this, we are being godly. It's up to them to do the right thing. And, uh, and, and they, again, they, have, they will be subject to God and have to submit to God on, on, and give an account for how they acted and lived. Um, so, let's move on to 8. Fulfilling the law through love. Verse 8, owe no one anything except to love each other, 
For the one who loves one another, for the one who loves another, has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love, and he's quoting Jesus now, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So, although if you if you have love, you're not going to steal. You're not going to covet somebody else's wife or their boat or their things, right? <clears throat> you're not going to steal their stuff. You're not going to murder, right? If you have love for them, it's a true love. You're going to feel compassion. You're going to be humble. You're going to you're going to want to treat them with respect verse 11 besides this you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed the night is far gone the day is at hand so then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light what's going on here what does this mean Christ is coming soon we don't know when. Now, it's been, since here, it's been over 2,000 years. For God, he's outside of time. Blink of an eye, right? We don't know when he's going to show. And we want to be ready. Uh, Jesus said it was like uh, servants. Their master went off to get his bride, knowing he's going to come back. And they... They have to stay awake. They have to stay prepared. They can't be found asleep because then they're not ready to do their job, right? And uh, <clears throat> same thing with us. We, if the time is short, Jesus is coming back. He said he would. And he, he will keep his promises. And so, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Verse 13. Let us walk properly as in the day and the time, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. If there's something that trips you up in those areas, get rid of it. The time is short. This chapter is short. <laughs> so uh, we're, it's not going to be as long today. But it's packed. It's jam-packed with stuff. And it's hard for us, you know. If we walk in the flesh, we are going to give over to these desires of the flesh. If we walk by the Spirit, we will not carry out the desires of the flesh. And remember last week, we talked about, what was that in, in verse 12? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I just lost what I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> the, oh, the renewal of the mind. That is what's going to keep us from here. Staying in God's word. Walking by the Spirit is staying in the God's word. It's praying. It's knowing that God is with you all the day, 24 hours a day, whether you're sleeping, walking, whatever, he is with us. And uh, so let's just pray that we will love one another, we'll love our enemies, we'll pray for those who persecute us, and we'll love those who love us, we love our family and everyone around us. This is, this is so important, and it's hard. It's not gonna be easy in the flesh. But through the Holy Spirit, through the Helper, we can do this. All right? That's it. I do have planned this time the uh, Valley of Vision. If you're not familiar, this is a book of prayers and devotions. And, and I like to read this at the end. It's a really good uh, prayer and things to kind of put it all in perspective. And uh, so this one's called Voyage. 
Um, if you have this book, it's on page 110. Voyage. O Lord of the Oceans, my little bark sails on a restless sea. Grant that Jesus may sit at the helm and steer me safely. Suffer no adverse currents to divert my heavenward course. Let not my faith be wrecked amid storms and shoals. Bring me to harbor with flying pennants, hull unabreached, cargo unspoiled. I ask great things, expect great things, shall receive great things. I venture on thee wholly, fully, my wind, sunshine, anchor, defense. The voyage is long, the waves high, the storms pitiless, but my helm is held steady. Your word secures safe passage. Your grace wafts me on, on onward. I don't know that word. I have to look that up. Wafts. W-A-F-T-S. My heaven is guaranteed. This day will bring me nearer home. Grant me holy consistency in every transaction. My peace flowing as a running tide. My righteousness as every chasing wave. Help me to live circumspectly with skill to convert every care into prayer. Halo my path with gentleness and love. Smooth every asperity of temper. Let me not forget how easy it is to occasion grief. May I strive to bind up every womb wound and pour oil on all troubled waters that's loving your enemies that's loving those around you may the world this day be happier and better because i live let my mast before me be the savior's cross and every oncoming wave the fountain in his side help me protect me in the moving sea until i reach the shore of unceasing praise to god be the glory as you go on your voyage this week, go with God. Go with love in your heart for your neighbors, for your loved ones, for your enemies. Really, as Christians, there are no enemies, only those who, who don't like us. And um, let us do as Jesus did and have compassion and pity on them. Pray for them. Lift them up to the Heavenly Father. All right. This is Stephen from Small Family Adventures. I'm going to sign it off for now from our family to yours. Have an amazing week, okay? And I'll see you next time. Bye.